Hello, in this video I'll be giving a brief overview of how to use Xfig. Uh, if you're not familiar, Xfig is a figure drawing tool that's pretty powerful. Uh, in this video I will first be going over some strange quirks that Xfig has, uh, then move on to explaining what each of these panels on the border of the screen do. Uh, I'll briefly cover what these main menus do and then get on to explaining what all of these drawing and editing modes are, uh, which will take up most of the video. I'll do this by drawing some example figures and then modifying them uh, in the hopes that you'll see how each of them work. Lastly, I want to mention that if you're still confused by anything, I highly recommend going to this how-to guide right here. Uh, comes prepackaged with Xfig, and it's just the best research that you can find uh, for how to do things in the program. It's very comprehensive and pretty simple to understand, actually. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about some of the strange quirks you will encounter when using Xfig. Uh, the first one that's probably going to be the most jarring is how these menus work up here. Uh, you have to click and hold them to open it and then let go to select it. If you just click once, it immediately goes away. Uh, that takes a bit of getting used to, but it's uh, pretty convenient once you get used to it. The other strange thing is undo. Uh, it works like in Microsoft Notepad. Uh, it will undo the last action and then redo it again. Uh, but the really strange thing is that it's mapped to meta U, and meta is not control, it's alt. So in most programs, you might think of undo as control Z, but in Xfig, it's alt U. Another oddity that you'll probably encounter is how text boxes work in this program. So I'm going to go ahead and say, or let's export this blank image. And I will click on the output file and start naming it. Uh, but if I move my mouse off of the text box, I can no longer type in it. And the last thing I want to briefly mention is, depending on how you've installed Xfig to your system, uh, if you hold shift and use your scroll wheel, you might have a different interaction than I do. In my experience, if you install Xfig directly from the Ubuntu repository, uh, if you hold shift and use mouse wheel, you will get a pop-up menu that will let you uh, quickly select uh, drawing modes if you scroll up and editing modes if you scroll down. Uh, this is mitigated by just building it from the source, which I have done. Uh, so that's just something you should probably be aware of. All right, now that I've talked about that, let's go into what all these panels are and what they do. Uh, what I consider the most important panel is this mouse function indicator panel up here. Uh, there are three boxes, as you can see. The left mouse, middle mouse, and right mouse box. So if I click this circle ellipse drawing tool, you will see if I left click, I will select a circle center and then I can set the radius of the circle using left click again, or if I use right click, I can cancel drawing the circle completely. Uh, some other self-explanatory things, these are just the rulers. Uh, they can be set to a scale, as I'll show in a bit. Uh, this is the drawing modes panel and editing modes panel. Uh, as you might expect, they select different drawing and editing tools. I'll be going over this, as I said, a bit later in the tutorial. Uh, but this panel is the attribute panel. Uh, and this will change all sorts of attributes for what you're drawing, as well as how you edit some things. Uh, on the right side over here is the depth panel. Uh, there is a layering system in Xfig called depth. And the closer to zero something is, the more on top of all objects that object will be. Uh, the max depth is 999, the minimum depth is zero. Some other panels Xfig has are the unit box, uh, this can change the scale as well as the units that these rulers measure in. Uh, this is the message panel. It'll give you some information about uh, what you've clicked on or what you've just done. Uh, up here actually will say the current file name. I don't have anything selected or opened, uh, so this is blank right now. And these are the main menus, which I will actually cover next. So just as an example, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, some of these file options. Uh, so I'll make some circles and I will save this figure as example 
uh, it'll add dot fig to the end. Uh, I have set up this folder, uh, home xfig, and I will save this there. And as you can see, it has appeared. Uh, I can then make a new uh, image or new figure, and then I will open the example figure back and we get that back. Uh, another really cool thing that you can do is if I just make a large rectangle here, I can merge this with the example figure that I have created. And these are now uh, together. It just adds all the objects from the fig file to the canvas, which can be uh, pretty useful. Uh, and the last really useful thing that you can do, uh, of course you can print this just immediately, uh, but you can export this to uh, PDF. There's a whole bunch of options, including LaTeX. I won't be going into LaTeX because that's its own beast altogether in this tutorial. Uh, so I'll just be using PDF for this example. Uh, let's name it look example again. Now, actually, if you leave it blank, it should automatically name itself to example.pdf. Um, there are some options you can tweak. Let's make the background blue just for fun. Uh, current figure is modified. That's because I've added the rectangle. Uh, so let's save it. Let's name this example. Nope. Uh, I mentioned that you can only type when you're hovering over the box. So example two. Let's save. And I will try exporting it again. And it has exported. And you can see a figure two and this. Uh, so maybe blue wasn't the best choice of color. But as you can definitely see, these are our... Uh, figures. And actually, just to quickly demonstrate, uh, let's change this back to white. Uh, let's just name this A. There we go. This will essentially crop all the white space of your figure, uh, so the dimensions may look a bit weird, uh, but that's fine if you're doing something like a paper. But there should be uh, an option to turn that off, uh, yeah, crop to bounding box, and then you can actually set a normal uh, scale. As you can see, I've deleted everything I just had, and let's draw a house using this rectangular box drawing mode. Uh, so I'm going to make it a red house, uh, but as you can see, again, I'm just using, uh, if you look at the mouse function indicator, uh, I'm making the corner and then final point. Uh, but as you can see, this is not a red rectangle. And that's because the fill style is set to none. Uh, what we want it to be, uh, normally I would just use this right here. That's a solid color. I'm using shortcuts to delete. Uh, but let's make it a brick house because there happens to be a pattern uh, of bricks. Uh, next, I can use this polygon drawing tool uh, to create any polygon I want. Uh, it'll automatically close the shape. Uh, you use, generally with these line tools, uh, I'll get into this later, but polyline and these spline tools uh, have the same idea behind them where you use left click to make another point and then middle mouse to make the final point. Uh, and as you will see, this actually kept all the properties of this last object I drew. That's because the polygon tool happens to support these options. So anything that supports uh, the fill style and fill color will maintain that between objects. Uh, so let's just set this to solid color. Let's make it have a yellow roof, right? Why not? So I will go ahead and actually use the snap tool. I will snap to an end point, which automatically snaps to that. And there we go. Uh, I should have clicked middle mouse there. And that has made our house. Uh, now you'll see that both of these are on depth 50, uh, both here and on this uh, depth panel. If I click this, I can hide uh, the shapes. If there are any shapes on diff different depths, they would appear here. Uh, so let's actually add uh, a door because we want the door to be on top of this uh, brick wall. So I will go ahead, let's make it a brown door. And I will set the depth, again, lower is higher, so let's set it to 49. And I'm using the scroll wheel to quickly change the value. So just so it lines up, I will use the snap tool again. 
Uh, let's go to nearest. There we go. Uh, let's make it a door like that. And left click. And that has made our little door. Uh, and as you can see, if I toggle a layer 50 off, it will appear there. And I can toggle layer 49 and it completely disappears. Next, let's, uh, well, this roof is looking a bit tilted. So I'm going to go ahead and use this neat little move points tool to move the point uh, a bit over so that looks more symmetrical. And as you can see, you can move any point you want. Uh, Xfig you can think of as storing its figures as a series of points. So I can make this really flat or really strange. Let's make it uh, somewhat more centered here. Uh, and then let's make a nice little path up to this house. And we can do that using uh, the spline tools. Now there are four of these spline tools, but you can essentially think of them as one with a bunch of different options. The left side is closed, the right side is open, the top is approximated, and the bottom is interpolated. Uh, just as an example of what all that means, because that's a lot of word salad, uh, the closed variants will always create a closed uh, figure. Uh, so I'll set my final point and it automatically closes it. Uh, and just to show you the difference between approximated and interpolated, uh, they vary by how they uh, either go through or avoid their points. So approximated, if I uh, select move over here, you can see the point is all the way over here, but it doesn't come close to it versus interpolated, uh, if I draw the same rough figure, uh, it will try its best to go through those points. Uh, so let's go ahead and use the spline tool. Uh, let's use approximated, because why not? Uh, actually, I want to make it go through the point, so I'll use interpolated. Uh, so let's make kind of a curved path here. And I can actually use the copy tool to make sure that is symmetrical if I wanted to. Uh, and let's say I want to do a little minor adjustment. I can again use this move points tool to maybe make the path a bit wider. And maybe make this a bit skinnier so it looks not bad. And there we go. The last few drawing modes are pretty straightforward. Uh, we have this poly line, which is basically like a spline. Uh, except it maintains its uh, straightness. Uh, we have the arc drawing tool, which is again like a spline, but only the first bit of a spline. Uh, this arc has one notable feature, which you can change the arc type to be more like a pi, which can be kind of useful. Uh, and then this regular polygon tool. Uh, so let's give this uh, house a hexagonal skylight. Uh, I'll just go ahead and make this blue. Uh, we can choose the number of sides. Uh, we can go all the way down to three to make a perfect uh, equilateral triangle. And we can go all the way up to a ridiculously high number. Uh, oh, this is one of the boxes we have to hover over. Uh, yeah, 200. And that is essentially a circle at that point. Uh, so more than you'd ever need. Uh, but let's again make this a hexagon. And just put it here. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what a skylight looks like. Uh, I can move this to be more like so. Uh, and the last three, well, I haven't talked about arc boxes, but they're essentially just uh, curvy boxes. You can set how curvy they are with the box curve. Uh, this is still going to be blue. You can see that it just has rounded corners. Uh, but these last three options are pictures. You can just import a picture. I'm not going to go over that because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, text. Text is a bit strange. Uh, you can, of course, enter text, but it will actually scale instead of with the drawing uh, with your view. Uh, so as far as I can tell, you have to just guess and check, uh, which is done by uh, writing text, and then exporting it. Uh, let's just export it to Double A, let's save it, 
then export. Uh, you can see that's the actual size of it, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but there are some strange uh, flags that Xfig lets you toggle. There's a hidden flag, which will actually just hide the text while you're viewing, but will still export it. There's the rigid flag, which has something to do with ob or with compounds, which we will get into later. Uh, I won't actually say what this does because you can find it in the manual and it's not the most useful thing, at least for my purposes. And this text flag, which actually allows you to enter a uh, LaTeX code in the text box. Uh, so if you export it to a LaTeX format, uh, you can uh, keep the code where it is and it will run as LaTeX code. Uh, so if that means something to you, uh, that's interesting. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, and this last uh, library feature uh, lets you import pre-made figures. Uh, so in this case, we can make this house or, or barrack. And I can put it, get rid of it, put it right here. Uh, so that can be useful, especially when there's uh, actual uses such as uh, graphical user interface design. I believe there's computers here, uh, electrical diagrams, uh, all sorts of goodies if you don't want to draw those yourself. All right, so we've essentially covered all of these tools. Uh, let's get on to editing. So the glue compound is one of the more useful uh, advanced features, I'd say. So let's say I want to move this house. Uh, you might have noticed that I can only move one thing at a time. Uh, I will undo that. Uh, but with glue, you can glue all these objects into uh, what's called a compound object. Uh, this is done by either tagging each object you want to add to the compound or a more useful feature, at least in this purpose, uh, you can use middle mouse to just tag a whole region. And then I can right click. Uh, looks like I didn't get all of it. I can right click and this whole house now becomes one thing I can move around. Uh, so say I wanted uh, a whole street of these houses. Uh, that'll be fine. I can then copy the entire compound. Uh, you gotta click the vertex. And it's as simple as that. Uh, the other main two features you want to know about with compounds, uh, you can open a compound. And that, as you can see, everything has disappeared except for what was inside of the compound. Uh, so that lets you directly edit uh, what is part of it. Uh, looks like the compound I accidentally made earlier uh, is right there. So I can delete that and close that compound and that has been changed. Uh, I will open this again because the other thing you can do is just add things to it. Close that compound and now that is part of this rectangular compound. Uh, the other thing you can do is completely break a compound down to its component parts. Uh, so I've broken the entire house back into its individual splines and rectangles, uh, which uh, can be good if you just have a section you want to move without moving every individual object. And that finishes up what I'm going to cover in this video. Uh, the other tools that I haven't gone over are either intuitive, such as rotation, uh, flipping, scaling, or they are fairly specific, like measuring the angle between three points. Uh, all of them can, again, be found in the how-to guide, uh, but I covered what I generally use whenever I use this program. Uh, so with that, I hope this helped.